Hello guys and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of techniques using the paint node that I'm pretty sure you don't know about. So I think that we all are familiar with the paint node since it is basically the backbone of most of the things that we do uh, in compositing. Uh, and since it's a so commonly used tool, I don't think we have the need to go in the paint node and tell you that you use it to paint stuff on footage or that you can basically clone stuff around or smear stuff around. That, that's pretty basic. Super useful, but basic. Let's start with these fast noise and the first thing that I want to do is to create an ST map using a custom tool. And I'm pretty sure that if you follow me, uh, you already know how to do that. So in the channels tab, you want to change the red channel to X, the green channel to Y, the blue to zero, and the alpha to one. So that's pretty much it. Uh, another important step is to add a change depth before the custom tool, because we're working in the, the project is float 16. When using the STMAP, float 16 is not enough. So we have to change the depth to 32 bit flow. All right, so after the custom tool, we want to add a paint node and we want to add a channel booleans. So that's correct. We want the paint node to be the background of the channel booleans and the other custom to the custom tool to be the foreground. In the channel booleans, we set the operations to subtract. And if we look at that, we basically having zero because we are subtracting the ST map from itself. Right, so one more node, let's add a vector motion blur. Let's set the fast noise to the background and our channel booleans to the foreground. And, but as you can see, nothing is really happening right now for two reasons. The main one is because we are telling Fusion that the vectors to look at are in the vectors channels, but we have them in the red and green channels but yeah again nothing is happening which is to be expected let's go back to the channel booleans and for a second let's enable the normalized color range all right so move back to the paint tool i'm going to choose the stroke mode just because the stroke animation is set to all frames by default and i want to select the smear apply mode and now look at what happens if i paint something now, as you can see, something is happening, uh, but if I disable the normalized color gain, what, it's really faint, so you can't really see what is going on. Um, we are, let me see if I can show you better, like so, yeah, that's, that's a little bit more visible. So this is what is called a flow map, which is basically vectors. Now, to go back to our fast noise, uh, see nothing is really happening. It's because we have to normalize those, those vectors in order to uh, do something in the motion blur. So to do that, the easiest way is to add another custom tool. And basically what we want to do is to say, is to tell Fusion to look up the um, this branch here and to find out what the resolution of the input is. And to do so, we can use an expression and we're telling Fusion to look at this input here. So if you, if I hover my mouse over this input down here, you can see it is called custom tool dot image one. So the input that I'm looking for is image one. So I can say fusion, look at image one dot original 
width and it will look at what is the input and set the number in one to the um, original width. So now what we have to do is go into the channels tab and basically multiply the red channel by the number in one and the same has to be done for the green channel. So now as you can see we are able to draw our own motion blur. Super cool. By using this same flow map we can create motion using this macro called strange loops uh, you will find this one on reactor ha you have to look for stx tools and if we now increase the speed and hit play you can see we now have created some motion using the flow map we can then combine that with the motion blur to have an even, an even more interesting result. Alright, so this is pretty neat, but we can do even better than that. So let's borrow the change depth and the ST map and let's connect to this footage here. Alright, so the first thing that I want to do is to basically planar track this footage so that I can stabilize it. So I don't really uh, use the planar track, uh, the fusion planar track often, but let's give it a go. I want to set my reference frame, uh, in this case is 1001, my, the, the beginning of my footage, and I want to change the tracker to hybrid point area, the rest looks fine to me. Uh, I'd have to select the area that I want to track. Let's go for this and let's track. All right, pretty fast, I would say. Let's have a look at the planar track. And what we want to do is to change the operation mode to steady. And as you can see, we have stabilized pretty well that portion of the image. So let's close this circle and let's copy this planar track and paste it so that we can invert the steady transformation and basically we can go back from where we started. So let's me, let me point something out and this order of operation, so the steady <coughs> inverse steady transform uh, since the planar track does not concatenate, is going to uh, soften your um, your footage. So be careful with that. There's really no way around it. So we have to be careful. And there's a couple of steps that are going we are going to take to minimize the um, the softening. Let me show you what I mean. So this is before the steady unsteady. This is after after. And as you can see. Uh, the softening is pretty no noticeable. All right, keep that in mind and let's move on. Okay, so after our custom tool, we want to add a paint node. After the paint node, let's add a blur node. And we want to set the blur size to 10. And one last node is going to be the texture node. So this is going to be the background and this one is going to be the foreground. And then we can pipe the texture into our planar track. So now, as you can see, we have lost the um, uh, domain of definition, which is to be expected since the texture node uh, doesn't support the domain of definition. Uh, and that is okay. But as you can see, nothing is really changed at the moment. So aside from this, which is caused by the blur, and it's to be expected as well. All right, so what is that we are going to do? So let's say that we have to change the path of this road. So the first thing that would come to mind is to um, add a grid warp and do that with a grid warp. 
What if I say that you can do that using the paint node? You can warp images using the paint node. Let me demonstrate that to you. So I'm going to use these pretty forgotten modes of the um, paint node. And this one is my go-to instrument, the copy ellipse. So when creating the ellipse, I can hit shift and click and drag so that I get a perfect ellipse. And then I can click show source here and look what happens when I move the center around. I'm basically warping the image. Of course, the more I move, the more I get the warping here, but I can increase the softness in the paint node to basically reduce that effect. I can also change the size of my, let's increase the, soften, the softness a little bit more. Oh, of course you can, you know, change the angle and the size of the thing. So it's pretty, pretty nice. Uh, let's move on, let's do another one. Let's go for here and let's move it, I don't know, like so. And I want to make another one so that that's a little bit big. Show source and move it back. Let me in here show source as well. See what, what, what I've done here is by clicking where the there is not really a way to have uh, the paint node show all the ellipses that I created, but if I click where the ellipse was, then the controls appear back to my, uh, to the viewer, into the viewer. So see, that's basically, all right, so that, that's basically it. Uh, the blur node that I added is because for some reason, see here, uh, there is a bug in the softness of the paint node that creates this kind of um, issue that can be resolved by a little bit of blurring. So that's why I've used that. All right, so what we have to do now is to basically uh, add a brightness contrast and a polygon mask attached to the brightness contrast. And that's because we have to select the part of the image that has been uh, modified and we are bringing back on top of the other, of the original one, just that portion of the image, just the patch. So let's see the before and after. Uh, and I would say we need something like this. Let's see before, after. Yeah, I think we got it pretty much all. So in the brightness contrast, we can now uh, multiply it by the mask. Uh, let me show the end. We can soften the edge a little bit and planar track that back on top of the original. So now, if I move the playhead, you can see that my, oops, sorry, you can see that my warping is staying right there where I made it. So there's one thing that I want to show you and it's, you know, we've lost quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of detail and so what I would do is to add a little bit of sharpening and I will do that in log because sharpen works better in log and let's do that using a color space transform. Let's add that in here and we want to change from linear gamma to a let's say S log 3. And let's copy this one, paste that, select the, the ladder and swap. And we're basically back to where we was. Now we can add a uh, sharpen 
between those two. That's way too much. Uh, I would say let's let's animate that and zero from at the beginning and let's go for around here. Let's go for zero point thirty five. I would say maybe a bit too much. Well, that kind of works for me. All right, guys, I think this is a, a wrap for me. Hopefully you've learned something interesting and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye bye.